My name is Tyler Scott. I'm a senior at UAF and my thesis project is going to be on the reconstruction area. And I want to narrow that focus into African American education. Before we can dive into that, I want to be able to tell you a story about Alexander T. Augusta. At age 18, Dr. Augusta was denied access to all American medical schools just because of the color of his skin. That did not stop him. He went on to get his education in medicine at the University of Toronto. He did not just stop at becoming the first black medical student in Canada West. He actually was able to enlist into the military and became the first black medical officer in the United States Army. He also became the highest ranking black officer in the United States military. When Dr. Augusta heard of the Civil War, he didn't just sit by and let it happen. He enlisted and became the head surgeon of the 7th U.S. Colored Infantry. None of this would have happened if he had not been given the opportunity to receive that education from Toronto. That is why this study is so important because the Reconstruction Era began a rippling effect of change for African American rights. That shifted the trajectory of America as a whole. In order to fully explain this, I'm going to be addressing different laws that were passed, groups that fought against these rights for slavery freedom, and the impact this era ended up having for black lives and their education. First, we are going to look at what life was like before the Reconstruction Era for African Americans. The South was devastated. After the Civil War, the Confederates lost. They were going through a culture shock, a fear of change. Politically, they weren't allowed in Congress or even in the government. Their voices were non-existent. Economically, they were forced to close down their plantations, all because slaves were about to become free. Pro-slavery advocates stood on the idea that in every civilized society, one portion of the community must live on the labor of another. Therefore, stating that an African slave, kindly treated by his master and mistress, would be better off than the free laborers in Europe. This shows that they saw this as a needed part of society, which most likely brought them to believe that if they gave slaves full freedom, it would either hinder the society, or it would backfire on the white community and they would become the ones living on the labor of the African American people. As the Reconstruction Era begins, there was rumors that uh, the government was about to pass amendment to abolish slavery. While this news didn't go well with the Confederates, it became unacceptable. They were acting out in anger and they started destroying roads schools, homes, and much more. Now, we talked a little bit about the Confederate side, how they feel about these changes, but I want to go over the goals of radical Republicans. Now, one of their goals is to prevent Confederate leaders from having power in the government. The hardest part is trying to figure out how to replace these leaders and be able to go control the South. Now, what mostly populates the South? African Americans. Now, the Republicans started thinking, if we're able to make them free, and if we're able to give them equal rights as, as white folk, and give them the right to vote, it'll be better for the Republicans in the long run. Now, the purpose of the Reconstruction Era it's kind of about rebuilding, reuniting the country, and rehealing a fallen nation. One of the first steps of reuniting this country was the Amnesty Act. So the General Amnesty Act of 1872 was a United States federal law that passed on May 22nd, 1872. The word amnesty means forgiving of past offenses. This act reversed most of the penalties 
imposed on former Confederates by the 14th Amendment. The South claims that the, U the U.S. is not a democracy because they cannot elect some Democrats into office. So, hearing on this, the Confederate or the Congress allows former Confederates, uh, states of America officials, to hold public office and Southern Democrats to hold of state positions. This act decreased the Republican political power within the U.S. government. The Republicans were left with control of three Southern states, South Carolina, Louisiana, and Florida. This decrease of power introduced the rise of a terror organization that produced fear in the African American community and the white supporters, the Republicans. Now, those that joined the Union were given this pardon. But if you were in the military of high standards and you support the Confederates, or you become a Confederate politician, you are held to a different standard. You have to accept your consequences for raising a mass of people against the government. Now, one of the biggest changes that happened in the Reconstruction era was actually getting rid of slavery. Throughout this time, three Reconstruction Acts were produced, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendments. Now, the 13th Amendment focused on actually getting rid of slavery. It made it illegal in all the states. However, throughout the Reconstruction era, that didn't come into fruition until decades after. The 14th Amendment, it makes it mandatory for states to protect liberty as well as life and property for all races. The 15th Amendment opened up the voting rights. Everyone, no matter of your race or color, is allowed to vote. This became a big boon to the Republican community as the African American presence in the South is enormous. This made it highly certain that Republicans would get their way replace those Confederate leaders with Republican supporters. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 allowed for the enrollment of free slaves into the U.S. military. It was enacted in 1863, obviously, to emphasize that Reconstruction was not merely a specific time period, but the beginning of an extended historical process the adjustment of American society to the end of slavery. This proclamation declared that slaves living in the southern or confederate states were free. During the war, nearly 200,000 blacks, most of them ex-slaves, joined the Union Army. In 65, the Civil War ended and the southern slaves kept their right to be free. Their contributions gave the North additional manpower, which ended up being extremely significant in winning the war. Now, before we could go into the African American education, I want to be able to explain the terrors this community went through. Two of the main ones are the Black Codes and the Ku Klux Klan. The Black Codes were enormous laws enacted in the former Confederate States after the American Civil War. They were intended to assure the continuance of white supremacy. Enacted in 1865 and 1866, the laws were designed to replace the social controls of slavery that had been removed by the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment of the Constitution. So pretty much, the Black Codes went against everything these amendments stood for. Now the KKK. It was an organized social club by Confederate veterans. They were dressed in robes and sheets designed to frighten superstitious blacks and to prevent identification by the occupying federal troops. The Klansmen whipped and killed freedmen and their white supporters, the Republicans, usually in the nighttime raids. This group is used to demonstrate the constant violence that occurred during the Reconstruction era. This showed that the white Southerners were afraid of being inferior to the African Americans or have the slave master roles reversed. The white radicals in the South thought the best way to deter the black community is like through the violence, which caused a bigger push by the U.S. government and 
the development of aid organizations to change communities to be a safer environment for the African American community. Now, we're going to go into one of the eight organizations that was developed. And one of them is the Freedmen's Bureau. It was founded in 1865, and the Freedmen's Bureau was created to help the black community receive a better education and help them through their struggles. They were sending out relief efforts during this time of transition towards equality. Therefore, the U.S. Congress establishing it to provide practical ways to newly freed African Americans in their transition from slavery to freedom. Despite the roadblocks of inadequate funds and poorly trained personnel, it was able to give direct medical assistance to the freedmen. Its greatest accomplishment? It was an education. With more than 1,000 black schools built, they were able to introduce higher education to the black community, which was, for example, Atlanta University and Howard University. The next organization I'm going to introduce is the American Missionary Association. They focus on the habilitation of slavery, education for African Americans, gaining racial equality, and promoting Christian values. They were the most prominent in the United States from the antebellum period through the Reconstruction. It was founded on September 3, 1846 in Albany, New York, by disaffected members of the American Home Missionary Society and the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions. The founders were upset that these organizations failed to take a stand against slavery and accepted contributions from slaveholders. To correct this, one of the first and most important objectives or missions of the AMA was to abolish slavery. They worked hard to help push the slavery debate onto the national political agenda and founded the American Missionary Magazine and better spread their message. As one of the few organizations that believed in racial equality, their leadership was also integrated. The first board of the AMA consisted of eight white men and four black men. African Americans and white sympathizers believed that education should be the top priority for free slaves and were the best way to help them gain their civil rights. With this idea at the core of the AMA's beliefs, they founded more than 500 schools and colleges in the South and spent more money doing so than the U.S. government uh, sponsored Freedmen's Bureau. Those colleges that they've helped also build was Fisk University and Hampton University. So now we're going to transfer into the education changes. From 1861 to 1876, formerly enslaved men and women are crying out for education. The federal government funded organizations and northern missionaries have provided this education. They even hired teachers, they built schools, and purchased textbooks. Segregation was involved during this time as there are white schools and there are black schools. The teachers that were hired, they went to work in black schools and they were focused primarily on literacy rates and population in these black schools. These were poorly funded, which limited the number of textbooks available to them. So these missionaries, they adapted. Instead of using textbooks fully, they started using the Bible. It was free and it was widely available. That way they could still be able to hit the minimum requirements to further education. Just by studying the Bible, they were, the black community was able to read, they were able to write, and they were able to have fluent conversations. These textbooks given to the black schools, not the Bibles, the textbooks, they were a prime example of how the white society portrays the black community. These textbooks were the white American's way to force these freed slaves back into the plantations. Uh, Bronson said, this reinforcement of negative stereotypes was done to maintain white supremacy post-slavery. The white missionaries felt that if the black community was not educated in the Christian beliefs, then they would not be forgiven of their sins that they did not know they committed. After learning from the missionaries about the Bible and God, 
the black community would be dead to their old life and risen again with the new knowledge given to them. Now we are going to transition to the end of the Reconstruction Era. So there are three points that prove the first version of the Reconstruction Era was complete fail. Yes, it did plant seeds for this African Americans to have the same rights as the white man, but that didn't happen until decades later. There was these are the three points that show that our construction era was complete fail: the Compromise of 1877, the political corruption, and the Panic of 1873. It does show that the path is attainable but it will be highly difficult. The Compromise of 1877 was a secret agreement between the Democrats and the Republicans uh, where President Hayes had to pull troops, federal troops, out of the, the southern states or confederate states so they could have, the Republicans could have control of the government. But with this pulling troops out, it decreased the Republicans' influence and now everything they've worked for in the South became completely reversed. The Panic of 1873, it was when the World Bank economically failed and a lot of countries were impacted heavily by this. They became poor, bankrupt, it was just, it was a sad moment. It became known as the Long Depression. For America it wasn't that long, but for other countries like Britain and France, it took a while to get over. It was hard for the African Americans during this time to fight for their rights because now they just need to survive. They can't focus all their energy on trying to fight to be equal. Now they're trying to fight to be sustainable. With this fight for survival, the Democrats used this opportunity to now provide a place of work for the African Americans. And what good place to go? Back to the plantations. Unfortunately, as with any change, it did not happen right away. It took time to be accepted and had to keep being enforced until African Americans could feel safe and be given the same opportunity they definitely deserve. Without the African American population, the United States would not be able to hold on for long. This is proved just by reflecting back on uh, Dr. Augusta, a life. There are so many like him who went on to change the trajectory of the American population and of the American culture that with one of our darkest chapters of American history closing, it shows the length of change people go for to provide a free country for all people. A free country with a chance, opportunity, and growth for everyone no matter of race.